Hello, everyone. It is a great pleasure to be attending Interest Again and to be sharing with you a brief global HIV AIDS update, as well as to introduce to you the global AIDS strategy and the next generation of goals for the global AIDS response. 2020 was a significant milestone year for the global HIV response. I'd like to start by recalling here the first strategy to end the AIDS epidemic by 2030 that was endorsed by the UN General Assembly, as well as the targets that we as a global public health community adopted. By 2020, we set out to achieve the 1990-90 testing, treatment, and virus suppression targets to have reduced new HIV infections among adults to less than 500,000 and to have achieved zero discrimination against people living with HIV. How are we doing so far? AIDS-related deaths have dropped dramatically, and this is majorly as a result of effective HIV treatment, um, as well as uh, progress in preventing TB among people living with HIV becoming increasingly available. We went from, from just over 50,000 people in HIV treatment in the year 2000 to over 26 million people on HIV treatment by June 2020. But not everyone is benefiting because 680,000 people died of AIDS-related causes in 2020, exceeding the fast track target of less than 500,000 deaths. Data show that more males, more males are dying than females and that the rate of mortality among children living with HIV is higher than that in adults. We have become accustomed now to looking at the testing and treatment cascades. And we see in this slide, this year's update showing clearly that testing and treatment services are missing men. Men are less likely to get diagnosed, less likely to get linked to treatment, and even on treatment, they are less likely to achieve viral suppression. In terms of HIV treatment, children are still being left behind. Gaps in the testing of children exposed to HIV have left more than two fifths of children living with HIV undiagnosed. The number of children on treatment continued to decline in 2020 and almost 800,000 children living with HIV were not on antiretroviral therapy in 2020. We have done particularly badly at stemming the tide of new HIV infections. An estimated 1.5 million new HIV infections occurred in 2020, and this is still three times higher than the fast track target of less than 500,000 by 2020. This is despite having a widening array of effective HIV treatment uh, prevention interventions at our disposal. We are still failing to deliver these evidence-based HIV prevention measures to priority population, populations at risk of HIV at an adequate scale to achieve the desired impact. Globally, the lack of progress in reducing new HIV infections among key populations is what is driving our overall failure to achieve our targets. Key populations and their sexual partners accounted for 65% of all new HIV infections globally. And our data in 2020 once again confirm the markedly increased risk to acquiring HIV AIDS of key population groups. Gay men and other men who have sex with men are 25 times at greater risk. Female sex workers, 26 times at greater risk. Transgender women, 34 times greater risk. And people who inject drugs, 35 times greater risk. In Sub-Saharan Africa, adolescent girls and young women aged 15 to 24 years are a priority population at risk for HIV infection, even though they only account for 10% of the total population, 
they account for 23% of new HIV infections in the sub-Saharan Africa region. This graphic shows uh, a mapping of um, sub-national regions color-coded by HIV incidence. In 38 countries from sub-Saharan Africa for which we have data, there were 661 sub-national locations, or if you want to think of them as districts, of varying degrees of HIV, of high HIV incidence. In 2020, just 30% of these locations had dedicated HIV programs for adolescent girls and young women. This is a failure in coverage and, and among one of the reasons why we are failing to stem the tide of new HIV infections. In this next slide, I'd like to recall that the efficacy of PrEP or pre-exposure prophylaxis in preventing, H in preventing infection among people at significant risk of HIV can no longer be disputed. Yet the uptake of pre-exposure prophylaxis has been inadequate and unequal. Compared to the goal for 2020 of getting 3 million people at significant risk of HIV on PrEP, 845,000 people in at least 54 countries received PrEP in 2020. And further analysis show that the scale up of PrEP is highly concentrated in only a small number of countries. For example, among the 28 focus countries of the Global HIV Prevention Coalition, only six countries account for over 80% of the people on PrEP. Last, uh, last year. Finally, we were very proud that there had been great progress in reducing new HIV infections among newborns exposed to HIV over the past decade. But in the past two or three years, this progress has stalled. The reasons vary country by country, but we have adequate data to enable us to address the specific gaps in specific programs. I'm showing on this slide rates of transmissions of rates of new vertical HIV infections by mode of transmission um, in last year's data. As you will see, a significant number of, uh, of uh, infections occur because mothers acquired HIV during HIV pregnancy. A significant, a more significant number occur because mothers did not receive what we know to be effective antiretroviral therapy during pregnancy, or they received treatment and were not virally suppressed, or they got off treatment during pregnancy. So many of the 150,000 newborn HIV infections in 2020 could have been prevented if we, if we could ensure that all pregnant women living with HIV are receiving treatment, that pregnant and breastfeeding women are supported to continue treatment, if we protect women from becoming newly infected during pregnancy and it, during pregnancy and breastfeeding, and if we optimize treatment regimens among pregnant and breastfeeding women to ensure optimal viral suppression. I have just described, what I have just described are only some of the inequalities in service access and opportunity and scale up that are showing up as inequalities in response between and within countries and communities and that are preventing the world from ending AIDS. I would encourage you to read the full document, End Inequalities, End AIDS, which is the global AIDS strategy for 2021 to 2026 that is shown here. It is a universal strategy, not a UN AIDS strategy as in the title of this presentation. And while UN AIDS led the development of this strategy, it features the inputs and engagement from over 10,000 participants from at least 160 countries worldwide. The Global AIDS Strategy aims to end the inequalities that prevent progress to ending AIDS. It provides the best synthesis of evidence and is based on evidence, the best synthesis of policies and priority actions to support every country and every community to make progress. In addition, it features new bold targets and evidence-based actions for 2025 to get every country and every community back on track to end AIDS as a public health threat by 2030. 
the next generation of goals or the new 2025 targets are based on evidence, are based on an extensive evidence review conducted by UNAIDS. And they capture evidence-based interventions that if we can take them to the targeted scale, will lead to achievements against new HIV infections, AIDS-related deaths, and stigma and discrimination. Very briefly, the new targets call for 90% coverage of core evidence-based HIV services. They set clear targets for the removal of societal and legal impediments to accessing services, and they emphasize people-centered, context-specific service, service integration. Again, I would strongly recommend that you read this brief report released by UNAIDS last year on World AIDS Day called Prevailing Against Epidemics that gives an excellent background to the new UNAIDS 2025 target. And as I close, I'd like to share with you this modeled impact of reaching the strategy's targets and commitments. The number of people who newly acquire HIV will decrease to less than 370,000 by 2025. And the number of people dying from AIDS-related illnesses will decrease to less than 250,000 in 2025. This is the anticipated impact of implementing fully the, the new global AIDS strategy and the new 2025 commitments. And this would put the world on track to reach the 2030 target of ending AIDS. I would also like to invite you to visit the web, the web pages listed here for more data. For more data on uh, the epidemic and for more data on uh, the service coverage and interventions that are necessary to get us to where we want to go. Thank you very much for inviting me to participate once again in interest. And thank you very much for allowing us to share our exciting new goals for this decade of action.